There are two theories um, of how we end up going from one, one system to the other. Um, you'd think at this point it would be simplified, it would be in a single theory. It's always bothered me that there are two, but this is where we st still in this day and age are. Um, the first one, the circadian theory, process C. Um, the circadian theory talks about the biological clock. You've probably all heard about it. When it comes to sleep, we like to think of it as a gate. The gate is the gate opens when it's easy to fall asleep, closes, making it hard to fall asleep. And so you can think of it as promoting wakefulness. Um, this is the morning and early afternoon, and then the gate opens and you, and you get drowsy. This is the siesta time. And then it's harder to fall asleep in the early evening, and then as you get into the nighttime, it becomes easier to fall asleep. Now, this also explains why if you pull an all-nighter, you get sleepier, sleepier, sleepier. So five in the morning, you could just collapse. But come eight or nine, you feel worse. You feel more tired, but you try to lie down and you can't sleep. That's this process. The gate is closed. Now, in addition to that, we talk about process S, S for sleep. <laughs> sleep specialists are just not that creative. Um, and that refers to the, homeo the homeostatic drive for sleep. And that um, was actually, that's been around for a really long time. Um, it was just, oh, I can't remember when, but long time ago, that if you took the spinal fluid from sleepy dogs and you inject it into wake do awake dogs, guess what they would do? They'd go to sleep. So that led to the belief in somnogens, that there are these chemicals floating around that produce sleep. Um, we now have them a bit more defined, adenosine, prostaglandin D2, tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1, as well as nitrous oxide. Um, so you can see process S is the, is the homeostatic drive for sleep. The longer you're awake, the more of these you make, and it and it's pushing and and pushing you towards sleep, and it's the it's where these two how these two processes are balanced that determines whether you're awake or asleep. Um, and so we as sleep specialists, when people come in and they're having trouble sleeping at night, one of the first things we ask is, are you taking naps? Because as you enter sleep, your somnogens fall down. And so by taking a nap, you will get rid of some of these and thus not have a high enough drive towards sleep when the gate is open. Uh -huh.